Statistics and Excel. Average deviation. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape. Which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right. But three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, example, practice blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get right to the heart of the practice problem, blank tab, blank worksheet, so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be headed. We're going to create a very simple data set on the left hand side to practice concepts which will lead up to the concept of standard deviation. But before we get there, we're going to start with the average deviation, which is probably more of an intuitive concept and will give us a sense if we were to kind of create these from scratch or an idea of how they might have been created uh, over time. So we'll calculate the, the average deviation and then in a future presentation, use those concepts to continue on with the variance and standard deviation. All right, let's go to the blank tab to, to check this out. And so let's start by formatting our worksheet the way we do every time. I'm gonna select the triangle up top to format the worksheet. Right click on the selected area, format the cells. And then I wanna to go to the currency, negative numbers bracketed and red. Remove the dollar sign. Let's get rid of those decimals as well. So there we have it. And, and I'm going to pull in some of the calculations or formulas we did in the past. I won't recreate them because we've created them in the past, but this is our, you know, average calculation. Probably don't need it at this point, but I'll pull it in anyways. I'm going to hold down control and scroll up a bit and let's just create our data set. So I'm in cell A1, it's just going to be our data set. Hold on, I want to make everything bold. I got to make everything bold. So I'm going to select the entire worksheet again and go to the home tab, font group, and we work bold here. We do things boldly. Everything is bold. Uh, so in any case, negative, you're too bold, way too bold. Yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, put our data set, very simple data set we'll be working with. So we have a negative six, a four, a positive four, and a positive six. Now, obviously that data set will uh, will net out to zero. We're kind of doing that on purpose so that our mean calculation will be uh, at zero at that this point. That's gonna be the idea. Let's go ahead and put a little table around our data set. So I'll put my cursor in a cell uh, that's in our data set, insert tab up top and totals, and then we'll put a table within it. Dancing ants working their voodoo magic dancing around the cells and there we have it i'm going to make column b a little bit wider so it's so our formula is down there and i don't kind of run into that formula when i start working on stuff let's do our mean calculation the mean calculation 
We're getting mean, man. This is average. Average. No more messing around anymore. We're getting mean with the mean calculation. Get it? Because it's a mean cal. Okay. We're going to say this is going to be equal to, let's do it with the average. So this is going to be basically our formula down below where the average calculation is going to add them all up and divide by the number that are there, right? So if I select this little data set, it'll add them this plus this plus this plus this uh, divided by four, right? And that's gonna give us zero because when we add those up, uh, we have zero. So our mean is at zero. Uh, let's go ahead and make that blue and bordered, which is our custom dropping it down on the borders and blue and then on the bucket if you don't have that blue, if you want to find that blue, you can use a different color, but I like that blue standard color wheel. There's the blue. That's the one. That's the one. All right, let's do the uh, the actual calculation. Let's do a mean manual calculation just to practice that one more time. Make sure we understand the concept. Cal I'll say calculation. And so let's make this a header tab. So we'll do a little table calculation home tab font group making this black and white and then i'm just going to sum it up so let's go with the sum of data which is x so i'm just going to sum up this data set which is summing up like the numerator up top which you can see in these two ways we can see it equals the sum our most famous function you know nothing else you want to know the sum function summing it up comes out to zero and then we're going to divide by divide by i'm going to say i'm going to put this uh, character so that when i put a divide it will not try to try to do something because the divide is a mathematical uh function although i don't think the divide would do anything anyways but just to note if you're trying to just type something and you're starting with something like a plus or a minus then you could put that first and and see it doesn't show up it's just telling excel this is not a formula i want you to just type this thing out we're going to divide by the count i'm going to make the i can count them myself there's four of them but i'm going to use the count function to do it because that's way cooler and it helps us practice so put the dancing ants and work in their magic with the count function four of them home tab font group let's put an underline so we can get to the mean we get to the mean this equals this divided by this so zero divided by four i don't want to get to the mean i want to get to the nice that's too you got to get through the mean before you could get to the nice so we're going to then go up home alignment let's do some indentation and double indent home alignment double indent we'll put some blue borders around this by going to the home tab font group border it drop down and making it blue okay so now that we have that i'm going to give us a a calculation a new formula which we're going to call the average deviation so remember the mean is telling us kind of like that middle point and we have different kind of calculations to do that but now we want we want to kind of think about the spread and so we so another calculation is going to be the standard deviation but we're going to kind of gradually get into that first thinking about what we might do intuitively which is going to be the average deviation so let me let's actually practice writing in this formula i'm going to make this black and white for the header and i'm going to enter the formula we're going to type in the formula and then we'll kind of work it out in excel so if i go to the insert tab and go to the symbols if i make an equation Let's do our equation again. I'm gonna make it with an ink equation. So ink equation in the tools. So equation tab, tools, ink equation. I'll make this a little bit larger and let's type this thing in. So it's gonna look like this. We're gonna say, we're gonna use that sum thing. So it looks like this. And so there it is, even though it wasn't very nicely put, I'm gonna put the N on top. It might not see the N at first, but once I put the I equals on the bottom, it will usually pick it up. So I equals one. And so there it is. So that looks good. 
and then I want to take the absolute value. So when I do the absolute value, it'll probably read it as a one, but then it'll see it when I finish it. So I'm going to put absolute value sign. So it, see, it thinks it's a one, but then when I put inside it, I'm going to put X I X sub I. And so, and then minus the U, which is a mu and that that stands for the mean and we're going to put another uh so absolute value symbol and then i'm going to put this whole thing over underlining n okay so there's our uh what is that that looks like a funny it did something funny hold on a sec we just want an n n there we go Okay, so what is it? So what? So if we're trying to think about the 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 spread of the data, the first thing that we might do, which is an intuitive thing to do, is to take a look at all these data points, right? We could take a look at these data points and kind of think about where each of them lie in relation to the mean, the middle point, uh, the the zero. So 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 that's what this is saying. We're gonna say. We're going to take each of these data, which is going to be represented by X. So uh, X uh, is going to be, you know, six, four, four, and six, taking each of those minus uh, the mean, which is now represented by the mu here. And so that's going to give us our distance of each of the data points from the mean. Now we purposely made some data points positive and negative so that we can take into consideration this issue of what if we have negative data points that that could cause us kind of a problem uh so what we what we want to do is 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 not have positive and negative data points but see the distance from the mean whether it be positive or negative and that's why we take the absolute value so right so these are all going to be the mean is zero so these are going to be positive and negative from zero so it's going to be the absolute value will give us a positive number no matter what so it's going to be six four four and six right and so and then we'll take that we'll sum those up and then we're going to take that and divide by the count which is which is n so this is kind of an an intu the first thing that would probably come to mind when we're trying to you know deal with this concept of of uh, of of the spread right we could we could start to think of a calculation like this let's make the home tab font group let's make it a little bit larger and make it orange this is a drop down orange all right so there it is okay so now let's do this let's actually do it so the numerator is going to take all of our data minus uh minus the mean so i can make that with a nice little table so i can be we could do that quite nicely in excel so i'm going to make a uh, column e smaller putting my cursor between e and f and making it smaller and then I'm going to take my data. Let's just copy the, the table over here. I'll just copy it, right click and copy it. That'll be my starting point, right click and paste. And then I'm going to, I'm going to compare each data point to the mean. I'm going to compare it to the mean, which is equal to that zero. Now, when I hit enter, it's, it might try to take the cell below it. See, it's all zero, but it's trying to take the cell below it. I don't want it to do that. So I'm going to put my cursor in here, double clicking, make it an absolute reference. You can do it by selecting F4 on the keyboard or simply ty typing a dollar sign before the D and the one, the dollar sign, not representing dollars in this case, but telling Excel, don't move the cell references down. Keep on pulling the same cell of uh, this zero up here in D1. You only need a mixed reference, by the way, with just one dollar sign, but the absolute is easier to remember. So uh, that's why we'll just use that. So there we have it. And then let's take a look at the difference. So now we have the difference and the difference is gonna be equal to the six, in this case, negative six minus the zero. So the distance is six, but this is now still giving us a negative number. Now we picked the mean to be zero on purpose so that we can kind of easily see this issue with negative numbers and positive numbers, right? So, so now we have to say, well, I don't want negative numbers. I want to measure the distance from the mean, 
whether it be positive or negative. That's why we would say, if we were trying to think this out intuitively, we would say, well, this makes sense. We're taking each value minus the middle point, which we're designating as the mean. And, and now we're going to, but, but this doesn't work if there's negative numbers. So I'm going to take the absolute value, right? So we're going to say, let's do absolute, absolute value. Now I'm going to send, I'm going to center and wrap these headers. So I'm going to select these headers, home tab, uh, alignment, wrap them, and then center them. Okay. So then now the absolute value, the way to do this in Excel, there's a formula equals ABS. Now, obviously, if you don't know that formula, you can clearly, you can just look it up, right? You could type, you could Google search. How do you do absolute value in Excel? And it'll, and you know, you'll find the formula, but uh, absolute value of the six, because Excel's quite, uh, a lot of people use it. So there's, so, so finding out those, those, kind of simple formulas is pretty easy to do if you have internet connection. Uh, so there we have it. So now we've got the absolute value. Now, because I'm in a table, I can add a total column. So let's add a total column by being in the table, going to table designs, and then the table style options, I'm going to add a total column over here. So in the total column, the data, if I was to add up or sum the data, let's hit the drop down. It gives us our options of what we're going to do by default. Let's sum them up. So it comes out to zero, of course. And then the mean uh, calculation, maybe I'm gonna use my count this time. So I'm gonna say count the data just to show me how many data options because there's no point in summing up uh, the, the mean, which is the same number all the way down. And then the difference, I'm gonna sum this one up, which is gonna come out to zero. Now these two look the same because the mean is zero but they won't always be the same if the mean is not zero as we will see in future problems but the difference will always add up to zero uh, when you sum it up because the differences from the mean which is the middle point will always result in in uh, amounts that are going to add up to zero okay and then and so then we're just going to and over here we're going to uh we're going to sum them again so we took the absolute value of the difference and now they're all positive numbers so we get up to a positive 20. so once we have that we could say okay then the average average deviation calculation according to our formula let's put a i'll put a uh header column here home tab font group black and white and let's say this is going to be the sum of the distance from the mean, right? The sum of the distances from the mean, uh, let's put it over here, is going to be equal to that 20. So we took the distance from the mean, summed it, that's going that's basically our numerator, and then we're going to divide by, I'm going to put this here, and then a divide sign, divide by the count, which we're counting as, which we're recognizing as n. So we're going to say the count, and I did the count up here, which is four. I'll pick it up right there in our table. There's four items, one, two, three, four. And let's put an underline here, home tab, font group, underline. And that'll give us our average deviation. So our average deviation is going to be uh, 20 divided by the four. So we get five. Let's add some decimals just so we can compare it to what we'll do next time. I'll add a couple decimals. And so there we have it. So that so that would be like an, a kind of an intuitive calculation, right? When you're trying to th when you're trying to think about, well, how can I get some some calculation that will give me an idea of the spread of the data? Well, you could say, well, if I think of the mean as the middle point, then what we'll do is we'll take all of our data and we'll compare it to the middle point so that we can then see the distance of each item from like the middle point and the sum of those should add up to zero because the middle points in the middle and that's how we calculated the mean and then we can take the absolute value of those distances and divide it by the number to get to get kind of a number that gives us an idea of the spread and that and so that could be a kind of a numerical way for us to represent that 
Now, this isn't the way we normally do it in practice, though, because we usually use the standard deviation, which has a little bit more of a of a, a little bit more complexity to it. And we'll try to explain why maybe it would have more complexity because often because normally when you think about mathematical equations, you're usually saying if it's simpler, that's the one to use, right? There's got to be a reason why you would make something more complex in order to use it because the, because math is supposed to be elegantly simple, right? And so you want to, so, so we'll try to say, well, why, why don't we just use the average deviation versus like the standard deviation? So we'll get into that a little bit, but of course, this will also kind of lead into, you know, the same concepts will be used in uh, the standard devi deviation, which we'll do next time. All right. So let's make this uh, blue and blue and bordered home tab font group blue, put some borders around it. Let's do a spell check just to make sure everything is uh, as is spelled right, or at least <laughs> spelled good enough so spell check wouldn't catch it. Okay, so there we have it. 